Adowa End of an African Dream. This is a two-player word game, but also playable solo about a little-known historical topic, not the end game about the Battle of the Bulge. Uh, it is a game set in the 19th century during the um, Italian period of colonialism in Africa. Italy was a young nation, wanted to sit at the table with the big nations, wanted to be respected, so it just started aping the other European nations in their colonial endeavors, and it didn't go very well. Um, this game depicts the defeat of the Italians in Ethiopia, which was also the first major defeat of a European nation in Africa during the colonial era. Interesting topic, not um, very, um, not very often seen in games, as far as I know. I know this is pretty much the first time that I they played a game about this topic. Published by Aches, a publisher that has specialized in games about little-known topic, especially relating uh, to Italy. The publisher is an Italian itself. Um, also, this game can be seen as a sequel of a previous game by the same publisher, the game, the, the game being Ascari. Um, it's not a set of sequel because the system is slightly different, it's slightly more involved, but you can see the connections with the theme and with the mechanics. Also, this game does contain a scenario that can be played with Ascari. Anyways, let me tell a little bit about Adowa. This is the map of the game, which is a paper map. Uh, maybe not the most aesthetically pleasing map I've seen lately, but overall, uh, it's okay. It's okay, I guess. Readable with some minor ambiguities here and there, but definitely you should be able to make it work. A lot of tables here, which is good to have handy as you're playing the game. Challenging terrain with a lot of slopes and hills here in the central area. And the Italians will have to figure out what the heck they can do with that. Because the Italians will enter from these areas here and they will try to reach objectives that will be spread out <clears throat> on the board. Now, at the beginning of each game, the Italian player has to roll to determine where the objectives of the Italians are. Uh, the Italians are split in four groups and each group will have an objective. So you roll a d6 and you check the objective that that, that group is trying to achieve and you will place a marker on the hex that is indicated by the objective. During the game, the Italians will score point, points if they manage to uh, take control of the objective. So each group has to reach its own objective. And these are not like small differences, like, well, maybe one or two hexes. I said Albertone, Albertone here, may be trying to go to X2509, which is here. Or 1612, which is here. So when you consider that there are four objectives that may change location from game to game, you see how you will have very different dynamics each time that you play the game. The Ethiopians, the defenders, enter from these areas here. They are divided in <clears throat> into various groups and uh, in the first couple of turns you roll to see which groups enter when. Some groups may enter earlier, some groups may enter later, some groups may not enter the game at all. So also when it comes to the composition of the Ethiopians and the order in which their forces will enter the board you have a lot of replay value because you have a lot of variety from game to game. Units in this game are represented by counters. I place them in this counter tray, which is not included with the game. Units include commanders, such as these, such as this one. Commanders have a movement value, a symbol indicating the group that they command, and they may have a bonus, such as this one, which is plus one fire bonus. Each commander also comes with a group of units, of combat units that are led by that commander. You may have infantry, such as this one. You may have artillery. And the important pieces of information on a unit are <clears throat> these two numbers, uh, which are combat factor and, and movement factor, respectively. This is just to give you another example of one of the counters. The counters are respectably uh, thick and overall pretty, pretty functional. <clears throat> 
nothing to complain. I also like the art on the counters. Now, you have commanders and combat units, and the combat units need to be around their commanders to be effective. Commanders have command ranges. Uh, the army general for the Italians have a range of three hexes. The other leaders have two. As you can see, the Ethiopians have way better ranges because combat units for the Ethiopian player in command when uh, four hexes from the army general and three hexes from the uh, from local commanders, from uh, from other commanders. <clears throat> so units do need to be uh, in uh, in command range to receive uh, orders and to be able to do stuff. Each turn you have uh, first uh, an activation phase where the active player will choose a commander that will have to be activated, and then the commander. <clears throat> will give orders, orders to his troops, and uh, the orders will influence what the troop can do. For example, a unit under a or uh, group under the advance order, well, all in the group, at least one unit must advance one hex. If you have a group under the attack order, then all units in that hex must move at least one hex to melee or to fire. Defend units can move max one maximum 1x maneuver units can march uh, they all have plus one movement points but there are a lot of other restrictions uh, i just read the movement restrictions but then of course there are a lot of other things that different orders imply things that are possible or not possible depending on the order <clears throat> that your units are under when I said you're giving the orders, uh, I made it sound easy, but uh, it may not be that easy, especially if you're the Italian, because, let me say this clearly, the Italians in this game don't really know what the heck they're doing. They're just terribly disorganized. The objectives change, I already explained that, but that's a minor thing. The problem is that your Italian commanders may not comply with the orders that you send. So first you send an order, you choose an order for a commander, then you roll a die, and if the result is within the range corresponding to the commander that received the order, then the commander says, sir, yes, sir. If not, uh, the commander decides to do something else. Well, may do something else. Take some extra time to think about <clears throat> what may happen next. So, if the commander decides not to comply with the order then you look at this table you look at the line of the commander that is trying to be a little smart you look at the area uh, the, uh, the area corresponding to uh, to the nearest enemy if the nearest enemy is more than three axes away then you use this section of this table if it is within three axes use this section of the table so you look at the section that applies roll a die and you see what the actual order is maybe that will be exactly the order that you sent but still you will know that you have been obeyed by chance because the commander happened to agree with you not because he thought that was the right thing to do <coughs> the ethiopian forces have uh, only two possible orders they have less orders available than the italians they only have defend and attack and you roll on this table to see which one it will be, and they also have modifiers that apply to their die roll. So there may be quite some confusion on the battlefield. Also, as I said, you need uh, your units to be uh, within command range from the commander for this order system to even apply. They need to be within a command range or adjacent to a unit which is in command range. So you can extend the chains of command outside of the immediate command range, but if the chain gets broken, then that's bad. After units are assigned their orders, they can move. You have the movement phase. Active units will move, spending movement points based on the terrain that they enter or in the terrain hexes that they cross. There is a table that tells you how many movement points are spent by each unit in each type of terrain. As you can see, there are a lot of possible um, possible expenditures based on the type of unit. It will take you maybe a little bit to get familiar with this uh, uh, chart here. Also, half movement points. Uh, this always bothers me a little when you have to spend 1.5 or 2.5 movement points. I always wonder if there wasn't a way of handling that more elegantly, but so be it. No big deal. 
as units in that deformation move, they may trigger opportunity fire from the opponent. They may start melee by entering the X of of an opponent, they may also trigger ambush attacks. The Ethiopian player has a limited number of ambush attacks represented by these counters. At the beginning of the game, you roll a die to determine how many such ambush attacks um, are available to the Ethiopian player. Once you have resolved all of your movements with and you have resolved the actions that may be triggered by movement, you have the five phase that is units of the <coughs> of the active player that have not attacked can fire against adjacent enemies if they are if they have rifles and artillery of course has a longer range than that but you need to have a line of sight to the target if you're firing from a distance when you're resolving fire combat, you use the fire tables, pretty self-explanatory, look at the table for artillery or rifle, depending on the one uh, that you're using, the attack that you're resolving, different columns from Ethiopian, Italian colonial, here there's a difference between the Ethiopian and the colonial and the Italians, cross-reference with the range, roll a d6, apply modifiers, and then the uh, if you roll a die within the range indicated in the appropriate box, then you score a hit, results in red indicate double hits. Melee combat is resolved on the melee table, it is based on differential between the melee cumulative value of the attacker and the defender. So you have to calculate that for each player, for each player you take into account the strength of the units involved in the fight, plus or minus modifiers plus a d6 then you compare the total uh, the total values you subtract the lowest from the highest and then you simply look at the result depending on the differential that the player unit may have to retreat in the start hex inferior total may have to retreat retreat a hex and receive a hit or the inferior total may be eliminated Adola is an enjoyable game. It is pretty simple when it comes to the rules and mechanics. Maybe not like a 100% introductory war game, not the first war game you want to show to a friend who never played war games before, because it does have one or two procedures which can be a little bit involved or feel laborious if somebody's not familiar with war games. Also, like most, if not all, war games that have an order system, it is better played with players that are trying to play in the spirit of the historical event. Players that want to play out the event, see how things worked, what the challenges that the commanders uh, were faced with, where uh, people that want to see history being enacted through the mechanics, as opposed to players that want to win. And that's all that matters. Because if you're playing that way, then of course there are ways in which you can exploit the order system in a gamey way. You can just do things that really make much sense historically, uh, but that will score you that point that you need. And if you play in that way, this is probably not the best way in which you can use this game. This is a game that has all the historical flavor, a lot of chrome. It really comes from uh, an honest desire to understand a topic which is not one that is very well known. Um, so I think it is better played by and enjoyed by players that are interested in learning more about this topic, if you're familiar with, or simply learning about this topic. Maybe you have never heard about this battle, still it is a page of European colonialism in Africa, which is particularly interesting, particularly fascinating when you see that it is, well, the time when the African peoples are starting to effectively push back. So there is a lot uh, to be gained from playing this game. You have to be in the right spirit. You really have to be a war gamer that enjoys history and that enjoys the way in which war games can capture history. This game does that well. You really can see how the mechanics manage to capture a lot of historical events. The disorganization in the Italian chain of command, commanders that really don't know what they're doing, they uh, disagree with each other, they're not following uh, orders, and you see the result. Uh, Non-symmetrical situation, the Italians have the advantage of uh, superior weaponry, 
and that's pretty much it really uh, because they struggle to advance in this landscape which is unfamiliar to them a type of terrain in which they don't perform all that well on the other side you have the Ethiopians that outnumber the Italians that move faster um, that uh, have more reliable command a more of a command system, a lot of interesting rules to capture some specific um, ways in which the commanders of the time uh, behaved and influenced the battle. The Ethiopians have some charismatic leaders that offer bonuses uh, for being there and inspiring the troops. There's a lot of history in here. I like that. Uh, the game um, has a pace that is a little procedural. Yes, again, you need to be kind of the kind of person that appreciates history and war games about that. But if you're into that, then this game, as I said, really captures an historical event. The progression and the narrative of the game is overall uh, pretty interesting. You have the Italians that have this initial push, they're trying to occupy. Uh, as much land as possible while to go uh, towards their objectives and sometimes they get each other's way as they do that and then the Ethiopians that do not start on the map come in and they start uh, breaking havoc in the lines of the Italians. A uh, lot of replay value due to the changing objectives of the Italian from game to game and the different way in which the Ethiopians will enter the board in different uh, order in different waves. So, uh, no hidden information uh, which allows you to play the game solitaire at the best of your possibilities. You play both sides at the best of your possibilities. You will have a lot of interesting moments in which you will surprise yourselves, yourself, and in which the Italian commanders will surprise you. Occasionally the Ethiopian, the Ethiopian ones too, but the Italians. You have that degree of uncontrollability, that degree of randomness which really uh, works well when you're playing a war game in a solitaire fashion. So, Adowa, the end of an African dream. Due to the little known topic, it may not be one of the most fashionable, fashionable games out there, not one of the sexiest games out there. It is not a game where you see characters from the TV show Game of Thrones or of Thrones or anything that recognizable on the cover. The publisher is not one of the major publishers. Uh, still, this is a game that has worth and merit. Definitely a game that the achieves its intent of depicting a historical event and doing it in an interesting, playable way. Adowa may be for a small uh, audience, but I think that audience of serious war gamers and history buffs will be pleased with it.